a rust magnet. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong kind of bracelet. <laughs> Um, I, I, I just wanted to come up and kind of talk about my experience Tuesday night into Wednesday night. Um, just what happened, <coughs> being arrested, and just kind of what's happened since then. Um, uh, ben, Anita, Mark, John, and myself went to L.A. on Tuesday night. And it was, we, we decided to go before we knew that they were being raided. We just want, we, it was eviction week, so we wanted to just go, stay the night, show solidarity, and just, you know, connect and whatever. So, and as we were getting ready to go, we found out that it was really likely that the raid was going to happen, but we're like, okay, we got to go, you know, get other people to go. So, um, it was really intense when we got there. I mean, they were like ready or as ready as you can be. I mean, people were getting ready to chain up. Um, people were taking the streets. You know, just tons and tons of people were there. Um, there was the, the news van situation was crazy. I mean, they had a media pool, so I think it was like 12 news agencies were allowed to be in there. Um, when the CNN news van came up, they pulled into the crowd. We saw the chief of police like run up to the van and tell the driver basically to get the fuck out of there. And then later, I, and I was posting this like as everything was happening um, to my Facebook and to Twitter, and I got multiple responses that the news, like KCAL and Fox, were reporting that uh, the occupiers were vandalizing the van, and that's why I was told to leave. And it's just like, no. <laughs> So that was, that was one of many things that I witnessed and then saw the media that just, you know, just totally changed the story. So, um, but we knew that the cops were all getting ready at Dodger Stadium. I think they sent over like 27 city buses full of cops. Um, 31. 31. So, and the legal observers were walking around and talking to everyone to make sure that they were clear on what was going to happen. Um, they said that <coughs> the cops would come in from all the, and they were expecting the cops to come in from all the entrances to City Hall Park. Um, they would give a 10 minute um, dis uh, notice to disperse, and those who wanted to stay and choose to be arrested could, and that or we would be able to go out onto the street if we didn't want to be. So, um, we, were, we decided that we would sit in the park you know, stay there as long as we could without getting arrested. And I think we were sitting, we were right next to the City Hall steps, me, Ben, Anita, and Mark. And the next thing I know, <coughs> people just started screaming and just hundreds of cops in riot gear come flooding out from the inside of City Hall. And nobody was expecting that. And I, I can easily say that it was the scariest moment of my life. I just started, I grabbed my camera and started taking pictures and Immediately, a cop with his baton just stuck it in my side and said, get out of the park, get out of the park, and basically pushed me out through the west entrance, and everyone else went to the east entrance. So um, we got separated, but then I found Juan, and we were at first in spring in the intersection, and they had us all corralled together. It was a, like a wall of cops um, at first in spring. Um, we were in there, and we were chanting, holding signs. Um, taking pictures of what the cops were doing across <coughs> the street. We were pretty close to the media van, so I think we actually saw some pretty lightweight stuff, even though we definitely saw, you know, six cops take down one woman who was on her bike going by. Um, so, and I'm just like Facebooking, keeping people, you know, up to date. And then they came out, but there was a wall of cops, to, you know, further west, so we couldn't really go anywhere. And they came and they announced that it was um, declared an unlawful assembly we had to get out of the streets, move one block west, and stay on the sidewalk. Some people chose to stay in the streets. I went onto the sidewalk and stayed on the sidewalk. And this went on for like probably two hours. They were just like slowly pushing us further and further west. Um, and I was trying to coordinate with uh, Mark, you know, to meet up with them who were on the other side. And I, as far as I know, the same thing was happening there. Pretty much. Pretty much. Okay. So. Um, Anyway, so this keeps happening. I'm looking at Twitter, hearing uh, people who were in trees. When the cops came up to them, they were told to put their hands in the air. When they did, they were shot with bean bags and plastic bullets. People were, were pepper sprayed. Um, and this was all inside the park, and the media couldn't get in the park. And so it just, you know, 
a lot, a lot of people saw this. The people, there were cops in hazmat suits, and they were searching the tents and you know pulling stuff out of the tents. But the media reported that they were afraid. Mm -hmm. They had heard that it was alleged that occupiers were storing fecal matter and urine in buckets to throw on the police, and that's why they wore hazmat suits. Yeah. So, um, so anyway, so I get pushed all the way back to the sidewalk. The cops were running at us, and people were you know basically like stampeding up further west and. I was about three or four blocks up, and they kept telling us to disperse. And the east, west, and north side of the streets were blocked off by cops. So I was like, if I go to Sec and, and um, Hill, there are no cops there. I see some people just out. I'm like, I think I'll be safe. So I was walking on the sidewalk by myself, and then I see about 20 cops running around the corner, and then five cops charged at me told me to put my hands behind my back and put my face against the wall that was there and I said I was just trying to leave and they said too bad and I was arrested and immediately walked to one of the buses. Um, we were on the bus for seven hours. Um, so we were waiting there. They filled the bus up and even after the bus was full they just left us there. Um, and then what they said were they were taking us to Van Nuys to be booked. So we go to Van Nuys the sheriffs get off the bus and we were there for another three hours about so um, then they came back on and said we were going downtown because they didn't have room to book the like 120 people that were on the three buses um, so we went back to downtown LA and, a lot, and on the way there the, they stopped at Starbucks for 45 minutes while we were all on the bus people were urinating on the bus Throwing up, um, another girl told me that someone defecated on the other bus because they couldn't hold it and they wouldn't let anyone off to use the bathroom. Oh. Um, so we finally get to downtown for booking and we're, you know, in this huge warehouse room with, uh, it was 120 people. Some of the people had already gone into Van Nuys. So people were just spread out all over the place. It was, I was arrested at 2.30 a.m. I wasn't booked and processed till 5 p.m. Um, that means I didn't get a phone call, couldn't talk to anyone from the NLG, nothing, just, you know, we were just sitting there not sure what to happen. I couldn't get a hold of Jared. Um, it was about 16 hours before I didn't, you know, before Jared actually knew what exactly was going on. Um, so my bail, uh, which most, the bails were all, they all started at $5,000, mine was $5,000. Um, I was charged with unlawful assembly, which is a misdemeanor. So I was lucky to have Jared contact a bail bondsman and was able to post my bail, but um, <coughs> most of the people weren't. I was released with like a small handful of people who had parents to confront the $500 you have to pay. So a lot of people are still in jail. They were telling us all different stories. We couldn't get a straight answer. I mean, the cops were pretty awful with the stuff they were saying to us. Um, so, I don't know, I mean, if, if there's anything that you can do, a lot of the people that were arrested did rely on Occupy LA as their home because they kind of were coming from backgrounds where they were couch surfing or some who were already homeless and then stayed there and then started volunteering there. Um, you know, don't have places to go. I know the SEIU is setting up a temporary shelter and some people are trying to coordinate, but the people over the next over like that they expect 50 people to be released between tonight and tomorrow and they originally told us that Friday would be the latest people would be held but now it's looking like it's going to be till Monday night so people are being held over the weekend um, so it's it, it's it's a pretty shitty situation um, so I don't know if there's any, I mean I would recommend contacting if there's anything you can do because they do need more food donations and you know just help um, because they're homeless people who are being released who, you know, have no place to go. So, but um, I don't know. So I, I didn't want to just talk about all the negative things that happened when I was arrested. I just, I have to say, I mean, I was with a group of 16 incredible women and we just talked about our experiences, why we occupied, um, the things we're going to plan after we're all out of jail. <laughs> um, Coordinating other occupations, I was with a few women from Occupy Long Beach and then Occupy LA and then some people, various people from other cities um, and just, you know, coordinating and how our camps might be done, but like Justin was saying, the community is so much bigger and stronger now and it's like, 
just our direct actions are going to be even bigger and stronger and it's just you know we're really going to go into the second phase of the movement and it's just it's going to be really amazing so I know that I have made just you know new friends <laughs> Um, so yeah, I don't know, I mean that whole, you know, the fact that we were all together, you know, was pretty incredible and I'm, I'm, they were really incredible people, so I'm really thankful for that because in addition to all of you guys and the time I spent with you, it's like, okay, now we're meeting all of this, is how we network, we do it in jail. <laughs> so, I don't know, it was, it, was, it was pretty incredible, so I just, you know, it wasn't all negative, so I mean, the $500 is, um, Definitely financial burden. I mean, that's half our rent for December. So, um, I don't know. So, anyway, I just thought I would talk about my experience a little bit and just, you know, it sucked. It was really shitty. Being stuck on the bus was a really infuriating experience. The bail was. Yeah, people pooped on it. <laughs> yeah, literally. <laughs> so, so they took you away in the people's pooper? Yeah, they took me, yeah, they took me away in the people's pooper. Oh, and I should say that I was in a cell, I shared a cell with this woman, Dee Dee, who runs the food tent at the, you know, at the... Okay, by the way, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, but, um, I don't know, thanks for listening, I've been up here for a while, so... Yeah, I don't know, and also don't, like, I, I mean, I don't trust cops, I hate them, I don't think they're part of the 99%, and I'll always stand by that, and I know that that's, like, a big topic of the day, but, um, I just, you know, I, I'm gonna throw that out there, but, like, when cops tell you that there's a safe space, and there's, like, 2,000 of them, like, there's no safe space. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll end on that note.